coroner returned a uh, preliminary autopsy report. There's obviously still more things to do on the coroner's end, specifically the toxicology report, so there is a chance that they may change. But his preliminary diagnosis, the manner of death was homicide, and the cause of death was asphyxia due to manual strangulation. Our prime suspect, our main suspect, hasn't changed, and that's Amir uh, Bedouin Jr., um, no arrest, no charges on this yet. He's still in custody, and actually the bond from the kidnapping one was increased from 100000 cash to 250000 cash. But um, as far as the investigation goes, we're still looking into that. Um, there's a lot of leads, a lot of follow-up that needs to be done. We've made good, making good progress, but there's still more work yet to be done. So uh, once we're wrapped up with that, we've been talking with both the Lincoln County State's Attorney's Office and the Minnehaha County State's Attorney's Office and keeping them updated on the status of this investigation. So we're hoping at some point that will be some charges, but at this point we don't have any arrests or charges related to the homicide. Is there a, you, you don't know which county she died in, am I correct? Or is that, that, you have to come to that conclusion? We're, that's one of the things we're still looking at, yeah. And that's why we're keeping both the Minnehaha County and Lincoln County. I mean, it's... We know that it began in Minnehaha County. Her body was found in Lincoln County. So there's different pieces that we're looking at, and, and that's one of the things to find out basically what happened where. We're still looking at that. You know, I mean, I, I think everybody's seen that same information, but we're... I guess we don't have answers yet at this point in time. So we're still looking at may, there may be some type of connection there. We're not just not sure yet, uh, but that's one of the things we're digging into. On that search that I sent you the other day, yesterday, right? Mm -hmm. um, did they find her cell phone? I'm, I'm not going to go into details of what they were looking for, what they found or what they didn't find, but that search on the interstate was related to this crime. No, there's no no charges, right? That's just the basically the new information that we have is the coroner determined this was a homicide, and so we're still continuing with that investigation. Really, nothing from our side has changed. We now know that this is a homicide and not some other type of uh, death uh, that occurred. So um, we're still looking from basically the beginning, what happened, all through the point where uh, her body was found. So there's. A lot of things, there's things that we've learned, things that we know, but there's still a lot of information that we're still looking for and, and trying to find answers. How long, uh, maybe you want to uh, maybe hold them here a little longer and, and talk to them and see if you can stay for those other charges that are not pending at the moment either? Well, he's got uh, two other warrants and then the kidnapping warrant. Um, I mean, he's not being held on anything in connection with this. He's in jail on those other warrants. So he's, uh, he's made court appearances on those warrants. So um, until those are resolved, he stays in jail. Or I guess he could bond out too. Um, I know we've, yeah, we've talked about the ID case. Do the police or investigators believe that there could be any other similar uh, victims or, or cases tied to this? Yeah, and that, that was one of the things that Lieutenant Mattia had you know, ask people if they had similar things. We've had a few reports that have come in, and obviously that adds to this. Um, not that it was necessarily specifically related to this event, but, you know, if there was, if he tried to do this other times. So we've had a few reports, and we're looking into those, um, you know, and that's another thing where surveillance video comes into play. So we out, don't have anything, like, a, I guess, any kind of new charges or anything like that. Um, the reports generally just say that people that he would approach people in a parking lot. Um, we don't know if it was him for sure or if it was somebody that was a, a similar description. But we've had a few reports that have come in, and, and we're looking into those as well. Um, in those reports, when people have said that someone had approached him that, or approached them that could possibly match this uh, this person, um, did anyone else say that someone tried to get in the car with them? Um, I, I guess I, I I can't answer that. I don't think so. I, I think it was kind of approaching and, you know, coming up to the car. 
Um, but I, I can't tell you for sure if he got in a car with anybody or, or we've had reports where he got in a car with anybody else. Who's uh, actively working on this? You know, because we have police and we have more police. And yeah. Police the, and the county, is it DCI? Or yeah, it, we've got uh, Sioux Falls Police Department, Lincoln County Sheriff's Office, DCI is, is involved, and then, of, of course, the attorneys from Lincoln County and Minnehaha County. I don't know how much it, I mean, I think it gives us clarity. Um, you know, we, we know that she was found dead alongside the road. We didn't know the cause of that. Now we know that it was asphyxiation by manual strangulation, so we've got a homicide. So, uh, you know, from our point of view, it, it just clears things up a little bit. We know that there wasn't something medical that happened or uh, I guess I don't know what other event may, may have occurred, but... Um, it really hasn't changed our focus at all. I mean, from the point when we knew it was an abduction, uh, things haven't changed. I mean, we've still been going uh, like full bore, I guess is the way to describe that. But we've had uh, numerous detectives working on this, um, both from Sioux Falls, Lincoln County, and DCI have been involved with this. And uh, that's not going to change. I mean, it, it, like I said, it just really clears things up for us. <coughs> We motives are kind of <coughs> difficult, I'll say, to, to determine. We haven't had anything yet at this point, but um, just through the investigation, I mean, our, our main focus is trying to find out what happened and who is responsible for it. Um, everything seems to be pointing towards uh, Amir that he's responsible for this, but obviously that could change with our investigation. Um, as far as why he did that, that's a question that, is frequently asked, but we rarely find out why people choose to do the things that they do. Uh, one more thing for me. Um, have investigators uh, searched his apartment or where he lives? Uh, um, I'm guessing. I, I guess I know that was one of the things that they were planning on doing. I don't know if it's been done yet or not. I think it probably has, but it was, it was on one of the things that was going to happen. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't think he mentioned anything like that. I, I just saw the yeah. the heading basically that, that gave the manner and cause of death, so I, I don't know. But that's one of the things during an autopsy they always look at to see if there's any signs of sexual assault or sexual abuse. Um, really, I mean, they're documenting any type of injuries that that, that person had, um, but I don't think we have anything specific to that, but um, really nothing's off the table at this point. Once the coroner is done, then he releases the, the body to the family, which generally gets hold of a, a funeral home. Um, I don't know if the coroner is finished yet. Um, like I said, this was the preliminary autopsy. Um, so I, I suppose if he's got questions, he can always you know, do some more investigating on his side. Anything else on that? 